I think this collection is uh, about liberty. It's about breaking the boundary, about opening new horizons. As long as we will use it for that, it will grow and, and be uh, super exciting. The concept is always about looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead. And normally with these concept watches, it paves a way for other developments that then follow. A concept is not your first watch. You have to go into the Audemars Piguet world, in the Right Oak world, and eventually go to a concept. I've never met so far someone owning a concept and not anything else. It is so present, so thick in a way, so architectural. First time I saw it, I held it in my hand, I said, how, how can you wear that? Is it really? A watch is, it's a spaceship and it's so heavy. Then I tried it and it's quite comfortable. And it's very, it's there, it's opening something. I'm somebody who loves the world of fiction, science fiction, fantasy, as much as I do hard science and art history and mathematics and philosophy. I. I embrace those different universes wholeheartedly and simultaneously. So for me, the concept was everything that I had been waiting for, for a high-end watch company to do. We traveled to Le Brasseux in Switzerland, where Audemars Piguet was founded in 1875. Today, we will get to see the latest Royal Oak concept. But before the watch celebrates its exclusive world premiere in this video, we want to explore what this very special series is all about. To understand the Royal Oak concept watches, one has to understand the history of the famous Royal Oak. For this reason, we meet with Sébastien Vivas, Heritage Director of Audemars Piguet and Head of the company's own watch museum. Sébastien, yeah. how are you? Good to meet you. Yeah, Really happy welcome. to be here. Thank Great. you. I have something to show you. So here is the first rare look from 1972, oversized 39 mm ultra thin. That was a revolution. The first luxury watch in steel. It opened a new segment in the watchmaking industry. The second revolution is from 1993, the first rare look offshore, even more oversized, 42 mm, ultra thick, the extreme watch. And it opens, obviously, the segment of oversized watches in which we are still living today, more or less. Third revolution, 2002, the first Royal Oak concept. First watch that really opens the borders, the boundaries to the 21st century. New materials, new shape, ultra thick, new geometry, new functions. Once again, a new segment in the watchmaking industry. In 2002, the first Royal Oak concept was created. Tell us more about the beginnings of the first Royal Oak concept. How did it came about? It was a, at first a stylistic uh, exercise. It was not aimed to become a real watch. This is the way you, you build the future. And from this stylistic exercise with new materials, new shape, new everything, it was so convincing that step by step, Georges-Henri Mélan decided to show the watch for the 30th anniversary of the Royal Oak in 2002. Then it became a challenge because it was very close, 2000, 2002 it was two years before. We have found in the archives some of the drawing of Claude Meneguer. So look at, look at that. It's not far from the Royal Oak concept. It's not yet exactly the same one. But the thing is that it had to, to be developed uh, not only in terms of a case aesthetics, but in terms of uh, caliber. The caliber was made for the case, and the caliber became the dial. 
This is what makes this watch so revolutionary. It's not an open world watch, but it shows the caliber as the dial, as the engine, as the mechanics, as the architecture of the, of the watch. And new functions had to be developed, like the dynamograph that gives the energy, the strength of the, the barrel. Straight lines, very sharp, all curved. The bezel is curved. That's another challenge in terms of geometry. It's not only the curved uh, uh, glass, but the highly curved bezel uh, made it very difficult for the screws to go through the, the, whole, the whole movement. All this, the, the whole case. So these are the first drawings from the year 2000. It took two more years to produce the first prototypes and to come with this uh, anniversary watch. That had to be just one shot. The watches in the Royal Oak concept series are not only exceptional from a design perspective, they also always explore the limits of high watchmaking. Michael Friedman is head of complications at Audemars Piguet. Uh, Royal Oak, the 2002 concept, there's, that indicates a real point in the history of watchmaking. That's the first time any traditional brand when I say traditional, any historic brand, any legacy brand, any brand continuing to do hand finishing at this level, that's the first time any brand in this industry embraced futurism so directly and so boldly and created an entirely new platform of watchmaking to explore. It created a whole new avenue that now you can see so many threads that are directly connected to it. Keep in mind, some of the wonderful independence those employees who are now at those independents worked with us at Audemars Piguet when it was Audemars Piguet, Renault Papi at the time. Some of the great talents on the independent scene themselves were connected to those more experimental projects that were taking place at that point in time. Can you explain how you felt when you first had it in your hands? I loved it. It was love at first sight, the embracing of futurism, of something new, of something bold, of something that really felt of tomorrow and not of yesterday. And I love watches of the past, and I, I come from that world, but it's also vital that we leave our own generational mark. Each generation has to. If you don't leave that imprint, you're not gonna be remembered in the future if you're only reflecting on the past. The current CEO of Audemars Piguet is François-Henri Benamias. Since 2012, he has shaped a significant part of the history of one of the last family-owned Swiss watch brands. What makes the first Royal Oak concept so exceptional? You have to understand, in 2002, nobody was displaying function that way. It was really the beginning of looking at different ways. No counters anymore, but much more uh, modern and futuristic look. It was, I think, the first time that we saw that from the crown you could actually wind or change the time but with a, with a sort of like very car oriented, neutral, drive, reverse, we have the function here. Also how the, the wristband is, is attached to the watch is so much different from what we have seen at that time. Huh? Yeah, and people love Kevlar. They love the Kevlar band. We started with this with the end of days in 1999. Okay, but this was also, again, futuristic look then. But when I, when I get the watch now, I look, I look at it and say, whoa, it's a big watch, huh? it's big. But at that time, big was like, whoa, we want big. Only one person on the planet would say it was not big enough. Arnold, not big enough. I say, Arnold, come on, it's, it's, it's good. No. We also had a material called alacrit, which sounds very much from another planet. And so people were questioning this, left it. Nobody questioned actually the thickness of the watch, which was for me a little bit too much. But everybody was, oh, that's a spaceship. So, okay, so we're onto something. Over 20 years, 25 different and highly complicated models have been created in the Royal Oak concept series. It is an untold story of unique watches, pioneering design, exceptional materials and outstanding watchmaking. 
We have selected the most important pieces to mark the milestones in the history of the Royal Oak concept series. In 2008, the second watch of the series came out, the Royal Oak Concept Carbon. The Royal Concept Carbon watch from 2008 is the real birth of the Royal Oak Concept collection. Before there was only this model and it could have stood like that, just a one-off. It's an inspired and rethought uh, interpretation of the very first one. Look at the similarities, the verticality of the counters, the function selector, neutral time setting and rewinding. But what makes it revolutionary is the indication of the chronograph counters, which is actually vertical, but displayed thanks to a, a wheel. <laughs> if you look at the detail, a wheel is turning and there are very small apertures that are colored white to indicate the time of the chronograph. So I would say this is a first step into what would become a collection. The detail that strikes out most about the Royal Oak concepts is the blurring of the line between the dial and the movement. The, the detail is in the fact that there really is no dial display in the traditional sense. We wanted to deconstruct it to the point to where it's wearing its watchmaking and its engineering on its sleeve while also still giving a big visual impact. But the one that sticks out in this regard is the carbon concept. Because the carbon concept that was released in 2008, you have the incredible case materials, which are beautiful, the forged carbon, all of these elements, the ceramic elements, but you have a symmetry that's brought to those displays that is very important, not just for the concept, but for many complications at Audemars Piguet. We don't always take the symmetrical route. We can do movements and aesthetics that are asymmetrical, but I believe that Audemars Piguet, in terms of design, is often at its strongest when it's at its most symmetrical. That's partly due to the design language provided by the Royal Oak, as well as, as its evolutionary threads in the offshore and in the concept. Symmetry works very well with that octagonal bezel. The carbon concept with the forged carbon case and black ceramic bezel and elements, and these beautiful linear displays along along the sides on the verticals that just give it this balance that is something special. And it really holds up over time. The watch is now 14 years old and it could be newly released. That ability to cut through the timeline, not every model has that. The original concept, as beautiful as the watch is, as stunning as it is, it's of its era. You know, in 30, 40 years, people will be able to identify this as a turn of the century design. Even if it's innovative, even if it's the first of its kind, it speaks to it through that monochromatic nature and that industrial aspect of the watch. Whereas the second version, the, the carbon concept, it's a little different. This watch falls out of the timeline a little bit and remains incredibly fresh, as I said, even a good 14 years later. The next milestone in the development of the Royal Oak concept series was the GMT Tourbillon, launched in 2011. The Royal Oak concept GMT was launched in 2011 and it's combining a bezel in ceramics and a case which is microbillé, a very uh, refined decoration and a satin finished. It adds a function to the collection, which is a GMT function that you can hear, you can see here, and that can be adjusted thanks to this separate push piece when uh, the function selector, actioned by this uh, this uh, crown, is uh, positioned to the GMT uh, function. Of course, what makes it so special is the purity of its aesthetics. The lines of the bridges, which are actually the, the dial, are so thin, it looks like an hourglass in a way, and they are blackened to make the watch more readable. The GMT Turbion, which was a really beautiful and functional combination of complications, Wonderful, again, very balanced aesthetic between the barrel and between the tourbillon uh, indicators. 
and the, uh, and the setting indicator as well. And in this one, we were combining titanium with black ceramic. So titanium is a very important part of the Audemars Piguet story, especially in terms of complications. And the symmetry carries over to the movement as well. This is very important to keep in mind that the movements are really designed specifically for the models they're being produced for. And at Audemars Piguet, when you see symmetry carried over on the dial side, no matter what collection it's in, whether it's in a concept or a Royal Oak or a code or an offshore, when you turn that watch over, you're going to see that not only the bridge design, but even the decorations are all done specifically for that watch. And the concept is a great platform for us to experiment with those aesthetics for the reason we can push it all the way. There's no boundaries. And then when we look at deploying those ideas on our other collections, we can then work within the restrictions of the codes provided within those collections. In 2015, another important milestone in the history of the Royal Oak concept took place with the launch of the Royal Oak concept Supersonary RD1. Tell us also what is special about the RD1. What is this piece about? The Supersonere is one of those complications which, from a historical standpoint, is a real definitive chapter in the ongoing story of chiming mechanisms and chiming watches, which has a very long history which is tied to clock making and even tied to the broader history of bell striking devices and even water clocks. This is a very ancient and very important relationship in watchmaking, just as the perpetual calendar is. We cannot overemphasize the importance of chiming watches and to continue pushing this very noble field of watchmaking. So for the Supersonere project, as you know very well, it was an eight-year R&D project that pushed us outside of watchmaking as much as within watchmaking. So we studied acoustics, musical instrument design. We studied how sound is transmitted, how sound is processed. We really went deep and we wanted to make sure when we come with a new generation chiming watch that it was really something of this generation. RD1 Supersonery is one of the most uh, important achievement in the 21st century history of repeaters. Why? Because it thinks uh, differently the way to enhance the sound. Traditionally, the gongs are fixed to the movement. They vibrate and then some parts of the movement vibrate. The air vibrates and as the watch is uh, waterproof, the sound is beautiful, perfect inside the watch, but outside it's less audible. Let's be honest. You, from the moment the watch is waterproof, you need to do that to hear it. So the idea here was to share the sound with the people and to find a new way. So the, the gongs are fixed on a soundboard and the soundboard is made in a shape and in a material to have the best possible vibration. The vibration is leaving the case through small holes at the case back. And the sound is uh, coming from the skin to the people. So when you wear the watch, you hear it much better than when you don't wear it which is something amazing. And I was not really expected before we got the prototype. And this watch has also something special because it sounds so well that it amplifies every single sound, not only the sound you need, beauty of the chiming system, but also the anchor, the silent regulator. For this reason, the engineers and the watchmakers had to find a way to reduce the sound off the regulator, not by using a uh, century, uh, centric uh, silent, uh, make, because it's not that regular, it's an anchor, but it's on the spring, so it absorbs each of the thousands of small shocks, so that you hardly can hear it. This is patented. We were with this watch at SIHH. We had developed, maybe you remember, a small uh, mini booth in the booth. And there was a queue 
<laughs> incredible queue. We were inside the, the heating system, uh, the cooling system was not working. So it was 32 or 35 degrees inside and people were coming after the other. So excited to hear it because we, we showed it, we made it here, uh, chime. Just like that. And we were so proud with the engineers, with all the people who had worked eight years to develop that. And I can tell you, this is one of my greatest memory at Audemars Piguet. We were together presenting this incredible innovation. But this is probably the moment when I got the most tired in my life. <laughs> at one stage I had to go and hide and stay alone to breath because it was too much. It was really, really incredibly um, dynamic, enthusiastic and too much. You can wait it. This is platinum. This is the perfect demonstration that the case doesn't play any role in the sound uh, diffusion. In the same year, another very special Royal Oak concept watch was created, the Royal Oak concept lap timer Michael Schumacher. It was the very first time ever that we actually got an ambassador that asked us to develop a mechanism from scratch. We never had that in the history of the company before. And he said, I want you to do the lap timer mechanism, which was pretty complicated because that was existing as a movement run by batteries. Okay, because pretty much in Formula One, this is what you have. But do this mechanically was pretty insane. And Michael was very much involved in the development process because he wanted this to be as perfect as he ran his entire life. But on top of this, uh, when he got his accident, where we had not launched the watch. So there was a second issue with this. So how are we going to do this? And we eventually got the agreement from his wife. They said he would have won it and we launched the watch and the watch was a success. Yes, this is one of my favorite for several reasons. It also looks like uh, it's one of the largest because the two push base pieces here with the uh, uh, protect push pieces on the on the on the right are balanced with an additional uh, push piece here which is a lap timer push piece so it looks like the watch is 48 but it's actually 44 and it's extremely light because there is titanium and uh, forged carbon uh, as a case what makes this watch so special is that you cannot describe the function it's a lap timer, it did not exist. And when we started to explain that, actually, it's uh, two flyback chronographs crossing each other alternatively. <laughs> explain that to anyone, nobody will understand anything. The only way to really understand is to use it, to play with it, and to see that the first lap ends, then you measure by pushing the lap timer push piece. Then the second lap ends, and by pushing the lap timer, it brings, it stops the second uh, hand and brings the first one back as a flyback, so it restarts instantly. Then they are crossing each other. So it requires three column wheels to achieve its function, and essentially these systems have to be able to work independently of one another, while of course still being integrated within each other. We have created one of the most complex chronograph ever in the, in the history and I would say also one of the most beautiful uh, movement. Looking at the back of it, it's very, very present, even more than the first one. It's nearly two centimeters high. So I had the same reaction when I saw it for the first time. You cannot wear that. It's too much. But yes, you can, <laughs> and it's so light that it nearly disappears. You don't feel it when you wear it. It's a combination of uh, titanium, ceramics, 
rose gold uh, and forged carbon. The, the bridges were shaped to be beautiful, but also to make the watch more readable. So they were shaped and colored, blackened, to, uh, to enhance the readability of the watch. In 2018, Audemars Piguet began the next chapter of the concept, launching the first Royal Oak concept model for women, combining the collection's futuristic design, micro-mechanics and age-old gem setting. The 38.5 mm timepiece paved the path for smaller sizes in the collection. In 2020, Audemars Piguet set the bar with the first self-winding model the Royal Oak Concept self-winding tourbillon chronograph open-worked. This watch unites an ingeniously designed chronograph and tourbillon mechanism and a visible peripheral oscillating weight. The 2020 edition is limited to 25 pieces. In 2021, Audemars Piguet surprised its followers with a new concept watch, the Royal Oak Concept Black Panther Flying Tourbillon. For François-Henri Benamias, this piece is his favorite watch to emerge from the entire concept collection. So I really wanted to see a new concept case, which we have now. We know now that we have a real future because of that new ergonomy. We know now what we are launching in the next three, two, four, five years as mechanisms in the concept. We know what we're, who we're going to partner with also because there will be other partnerships in that concept case. We, it's clearly defined. So that's maybe concept 2.0 with me when I look at the Black Panther. Yeah, the Relu concept Black Panther is very important because it connects worlds that are normally not connected. The world of high-end watches, technology, beauty, complexity, and the world of pop culture, superheroes, Marvel. What makes it extraordinary is this. And Gérald Zonta did it already. Huh? In the 1980s or 90s, he made this Mickey or he made the Pink Panther. We made the black one. Black Panther watch. Now, this watch was important for so many reasons. To launch the partnership with Marvel with such an iconic character that's loved by so many, um, and then to detail the character with such incredible precision and love and attention, But then the way we cased it, for the first time, a 42 millimeter concept with a very ergonomic case, lightweight titanium, black ceramic bezel, and as it's 42 millimeters, it was able to really hug the wrists of smaller and mid-size wrists, where people felt that the 44 was maybe a little too big for them, or the clasp hurt a little bit when they closed it. So a lot of clients have been waiting for the 42, and on top of that, to team up with such a legacy partnership with Marvel and to do such a fun project with them. And it's just the beginning. The next chapter of Marvel is coming very soon. Can you tell us a little bit why you entered the world of comics? Very simple. Comics, I've entered the world of watchmaking a long, long time ago because you go as far as 19, the 1930s to start to see comic characters on watches. So we didn't invent anything. And the first one on a very high level that did it before anybody else, Gial Genta. Okay, so Gial Genta, uh, just somebody pretty famous in the world of design, used comic characters on his watches as well. So for me, it was just normal to keep this going on, but to push it further in terms of what we could achieve in craftsmanship. And who would be the Walt Disney characters of the 21st century? Marvel was the obvious choice. So, and even though I had the vision that we should work with Marvel in 2004, we finally went back at it the right way, and uh, which is why we have the Black Panther today and the second version next year. After looking into the history of the Royal Oak concept series, we can now exclusively present a new watch joining the collection. So after 20 years of Royal Oak concept, what's next, Michael? 
So we talked earlier about one of my favorites in the concept line, which is the Concept GMT Turbion. This is the latest edition, now with these beautiful green ceramic elements, which really give a totally new aesthetic. You remember we did a small edition with that electric blue fairly recently. That one's gonna be phased out, like all these concepts, very, very short production cycle. And here we have these PVD green elements on the movement, the green ceramic bezel, green ceramic elements, and then it's hit off with these pink gold tones on the balance, the hands, the details, as well as the crown. Um, and once again, that balance between the dial side and the movement side, it's true on all of our watches, all of our complications. However, on concept, it's always taken to the absolute limit. So when you get a chance to handle these watches, looking at the dial side is beautiful, but give it a full 360 view and definitely spend time on that movement side as well and start to consider all the effort we put forth to bring this beautiful sense of symmetry and balance to these very contemporary and even futuristic timepieces. Traditional Swiss craftsmanship and 21st century high-tech. Once again, the latest piece from the concept series unites both in a very unique way. But recounting 20 years history of the Royal Oak concept has aroused our curiosity. What might the future of the Royal Oak concept look like? The concept is about unapologetically looking to the future. It's being respectful of the past in the way that things are created, in the techniques that we utilize to create the watches, but it, from an aesthetic standpoint, from a technical standpoint, from a functional standpoint, from a user interface standpoint, a UI ver standpoint, the concept is always about looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead. And normally, with these concept watches, it paves a way for other developments that then follow. Rilo concept is about fast, is about going further than the boundaries, looking for new materials, new functions, new calibers, new ideas, new worlds, like the pop culture Black Panther. It's, it's a free-spirited watch. We are finally, finally giving that line a complete different vibe in terms of what it's going to stand for in terms of design, materials, and movements we're going to put in the concept. Because the concept cannot be looked at an offshore or right oak. It has to live on its own. It has to have its own DNA also for skeletons, its own DNA for mechanisms, functions. Because if I do a concept perpetual calendar, it doesn't really fit the profile. So all the movements we are working on for the concept will be much more towards future. And next year, you'll have a big thing about that. <laughs>